Hello everyone. Uh, I will tell you in a moment, I hope I'm coming in clear. I just posted uh, that I was gonna do this live stream. Um, but I am in a rush to get on the road. Um, and I'm gonna tell you why um, <clears throat> basically what happened was, let me just make sure we're, we're good here. Hey Dan, hey Dan, hey Dan, hello everyone. We only have 17 viewers, 31 viewers. I guess it will fix itself. I hope it's not um, private or something. I don't think it is. Is this private? Because everyone's saying it said it was... Good evening, UK. Helen. It's not. Okay. All right. We're done that. We're ready. Okay. We're headed out. I am driving. I'm going to tell you what happened. So, I love, like, eBay and Facebook Marketplace and all this stuff. And I, my apartment um, is never complete. I <laughs> I've been looking for a dining table for like forever because I just can't, I'm not like somebody who can just have any dining table. Like I have to have something um, that's like, I don't know. That's, I don't know. Like I, you know what would be my ideal dining uh, table? Would be the table from Beetlejuice. <laughs> like that would be like the spray fake concrete table like that would be my ideal dining table but unfortunately those are pretty hard to find i think i saw on on um youtube i think that that woman with the blonde hair she's kind of ditzy um uh she used to have a sh podcast with that guy and then they broke up uh anyway i think she has the beetlejuice dining table i think she had it made for her apartment or for her house or something because somebody said oh this woman on youtube i can't remember her name and i can't look at this right now her name is patricia i th no it's like trisha it's trisha her name is trisha um she has the field just on the table excuse me I literally have a three hour drive down and back, but I wouldn't be doing this unless it was something really good. So <clears throat> I'll probably just stay on the whole time and live stream because I have no one else to talk to. I called my sister. She's like, I'm going to a cookout at four o'clock. I'm like, ugh. Then I call my mom. I'm going to a cookout at 4 o'clock. I was like, so you're going with Pam. So, I called Dylan. Dylan's like, oh, I'm finished uploading shit, and then I'm going to Pennsylvania. I'm like, oh, for God's sakes. So, I couldn't get anyone. I called two other people, too, that you guys wouldn't do. Anyway, I tried to get somebody to go with me, but it didn't work. But anyway, I am headed down to Virginia to pick up these chairs. It's a set of chairs. Um, I don't know why they're so cheap, other than I'm gonna get there and the guy is going to kill me or rob me. Um, but they're spectacular pieces of art, these chairs. And I almost, as soon as I saw them and it was like, really early this morning, like it's like five o'clock or something, and I had woken up and I was just going through marketplace. I see them and I see the price and I'm like, this cannot be right. Because they make miniatures of these chairs. Like they literally make miniatures of them. So I immediately sent a guy a message and I'm like, oh I'm like, can I afford to do this? No, but when am I ever going to get a chance to buy these chairs again at this price? So, I just, uh, 
waited and waited. I had my phone on, and finally he texted me, and I'm like, "Are the chairs still available?" <laughs> He's like, "Yeah." He's. I said, "I'm. I'm gonna come down right now." He's like, "You're coming from Baltimore?" And I said, "Yes." I said, "I want those fucking chairs." So I am driving all the way down to Virginia to get them, but I really don't care. I thought along the way that uh, we. I could tell some scary stories which will be fun. Hey, man. Um, I don't have any cash on me. I have no money in the car. Um, or in my wallet. I don't carry cash. Uh, because uh, my car got broken into last week. In the garage, they busted my window out. And took all the change that was in the console and everything they took off. Like, it was probably less than $5 in change. But they took it all. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, when I got the window fixed, I just cleaned the car out of everything. So, now when you look in here, you don't see anything sitting around. Um, but the one funny thing is, like, my sunglasses were set aside. And these sunglasses are expensive, they're expensive somewhat, so they set those aside, I mean, you know, anyway, um, so, yeah, so I'm really excited about getting these chairs, um, I cannot wait to get there, I think I'm probably going to be getting on to 95, yes, am I, am I going on 95, no, I'm going on Russell Street to 2, is this going to just take me to 95, I think? Are we going on 95? No, we're not. We're taking 295. I can't believe it. All right. I almost... I For some reason, I thought that where I was going is close to uh, Richmond, Virginia, but I guess it's not. Oh, I can't wait till tonight when I have those fucking chairs in my living room. I'm gonna be shitting myself. Like, I cannot wait. Sorry, babes. I gotta roll the window up. I can't deal with that music. Oh, someone, um. Jen! Oh, Jen, thank you so much. These chairs. I don't even wanna tell you what they are because. Everyone's going to be like, oh my god, you're ridiculous. But um, I saw one of them in a museum, and I was like, oh my god, this, I fucking love this chair. And they're kind of, it was kind of, they're kind of, um, they kind of inspired Memphis Milano furniture um, from the 80s. So uh, I'm very, I'm just, I can't believe I'm actually... I'm hoping when I get there, the guy is going to have my chair instead of pulling a gun on me and being like, pull your pants down and spread your hole wide open. <clears throat> I'm coming in. As he ties me up. I don't know. That would be kind of fun. Well, excuse me. I... <laughs> Let's not fantasize. Let's continue our trip to Virginia. Um, yeah, so anyway, I am very excited. And Jen, thank you, Jen, very much. I appreciate that. Um, I just hope that uh, everything works out. Just leave it at that. Maybe Oh my god, there's a bike right here. I thought it was a dog, and I'm like... I'm like, I'm grabbing that dog. Because it's going to get hit by a car, but it wasn't a dog. Anyway, guys, so... <clears throat> and tonight... I have plans to go to an 80s dance party. Which I'm really hoping that... <clears throat> I will make it, because this drive is really going to tire me out. It's such a boring fucking drive. I am trying to open this fucking thing, and I can't get it open. 
Is that? Hey, Rob. Rob, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're the man. Rob and Jen. And everyone else that's here. Oh, gosh. How many people are watching? Five or 300 people? Yeah, it's like 300 people. That's amazing. 300 of you have decided to tune in to watch my garbage live stream. Which I, I really want to go back and do some more live streams, like on Saturday, but at the regular time. But my friend Dan is always like, let's, what are you doing tonight? What, let's go out. Let's go out. And then I meet other people out. Like, friends will come out. I'll be like, hey, we're going to be here. Come meet us. And it's just so nice to, like, enjoy myself one night a week. Now that I trust myself to go out and not be affected by people smoking outside. Because um, I don't go outside, so I don't smell this way. But I was, I, I was walking Wee Wee the other night and walk past the, one of the bars that we frequent and my this, this guy, Ryan, haven't seen in a long time was out front and he's puffing away on cigarette, on a cigarette and I'm like, man but I was fine, I was fine I was just like oh, it's okay do I have a full tank? Yes guys, I am so friggin' excited about going down to get these chairs I'm like freaking the fuck out like, it's my gift. It's my gift for getting through all the hell that I've been through in the last couple of years and feeling great right now and um, just getting ready to go into battle, man. Running the store. The store has been doing fabulous. And I want to, if you have purchased prints, thank you so fucking much. You have no idea how much I'm enjoying um, running the store and um, and just seeing, you know, hearing from people who get their prints who are like, these are fucking amazing. I mean, it's just it's it's like unbelievable to me. It's so, so wonderful and uh, it's just work that I really enjoy. It's something different for once. I just really enjoy it. Um, I just put up a little thing saying, oh, you can get this print today for 25 bucks. And, um, already had a bunch of people buy prints, so. Uh, this is telling me to go to Washington. You no, know, it is telling me to stay on to my phone. To... What? Why would it tell me to go this way? I don't... It's weird. It's telling me to go this way to hit 95, 25 miles down the parkway. So I guess we'll do it that way. Fine by me. Um, I'm just going to turn the air on because it's going to get loud. But uh, anyway, um, the last video that I put out was the, I think it was the Devil's Chair, um, and we've, it seems to, my channel, uh, my main channel seems to be bouncing back, it was really, uh, having some issues, uh, I don't know what was wrong with it, but, like, it kept reporting, um, the numbers, like, weird, like, it wouldn't report the count for, like, three or four days, and then it was always under, it was really weird, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if it was, like, the algorithm or something, but something wasn't right, but anyway, it seems to have been fixed, so, because the views on my last few videos have been really low, I mean, they've only been, like, 50,000 views, which is fine, but I mean, I don't really care, to be honest with you, I just don't care, but, um, everything on the channel is, like, right, like, it's, the watch time is, um, higher than usual, 
and the click-through impressions are higher than usual. And so, I don't know why all it's happening. Some people will just say, oh, damn, you're washed up. <laughs> oh, damn, your career is over, you're washed up. Nobody wants to watch your goddamn boring dead ball videos anymore. You're washed up. So, I disagree. No, I agree. I totally agree. Um, hey, official Nirvana. Um, good job on quitting smoking. Um, I'm going to die in a car accident. But uh, also love your sunglasses. Where do you get these from? Well, uh, my sunglasses are called Ultra Goliaths. They are from Holland. They were designed in the 1970s, and they still make them today. And uh, a lot of famous people used to wear them, like Michael Caine and Robert De Niro wears them in um, in uh, Casino. And a lot of like Usher wears them. A lot of rappers and stuff wear them. But um, I saw them in Casino, and because I have such a large head, um, I decided to, it's really hard for me to find glasses that I like, and I love these glasses, so I bought three pairs, um, because I always lose glasses, but I still have all three pairs, but they're, all three of them are different, there's one that's like tortoise shell, and then there's this one that's, uh, that's, um, uh, black with the gradient lens, but you can get, oh, you know who else wore them is, uh, George Romero, the film director of, uh, Night of Living Dead, he, he wore them too, but he had his prescription lenses in them, but, um, I saw them, I said, what the hell kind of glasses are those, and I started looking them up, and this, I've been wearing these for years, though, <clears throat> probably for Uh, six years, maybe? I don't remember the last pair of glasses. I was looking at an old video from years ago, and there was a... I was wearing a pair of glasses, but I don't know what kind of glasses they were. But, uh, I've been wearing these for at least five, probably five years. Um, so, who wants to hear a scary story? Should I go into a scary story? Um... It's really hard for me to see the, the um, phone. I'm sorry, because it's so bright out. Um, but uh, I'm going to tell you guys some scary story. Well, we'll do one, because we have three hours to drive. So I'll do one now, and then I'll do one later. And, um, thank God it's not raining today. It's a beautiful day. Um, okay first story, and this one is, um, this one is, is interesting, and I, I believe I've told this story before, I'm pretty sure that I have, but, uh, <clears throat> a long time ago, I was, um, this was probably 1980, I would say 80, 85, 86, somewhere around there, 1985, 86, um, I would have been eight, nine years old. Uh, my father and his father, my grandfather, bought this plot of land in the middle of nowhere, West Virginia. I mean, literally the middle of nowhere. It was, it was just a plot of land, um, middle of West Virginia, and, uh, there was nothing up there, you went on a dirt road for miles, and then you got to this, uh, old farm, and then you go through more dirt roads, you go through a gate there, you have to open the gate, then you go through more dirt roads, and then we finally got to where the property was, and it's a riverfront property, they still have it, 
Actually, no, they don't have that one. That one, I don't remember what happened to it, but my dad ended up buying two next to each other and built another built another house because the house that was there I think was kind of kind of falling apart um they sold I think they sold that lot anyway back then it was extremely rural now it's it, there's houses everywhere there's a Walmart nearby um back then the nearest uh grocery store was an hour away so it was extremely rural area um we were there uh to start building the house and my father had brought up all of these uh posts these very long posts and they were sinking them into the um earth uh around the perimeter so they were going to build the house on top of these posts so the, the job was to sink these posts well I had nothing to do because I was a little boy and I obviously could not handle a large piece of wood at that time <laughs> so I would just um I just uh farted around down at the riverside um uh, so, so, uh, I, <laughs> um, there was this town up there, um, and it's called Capon Bridge, C-A-P-O-N, and at the time, it's a small town, it's a very small town, you blink, you're, you miss it, um, but it's right, uh, it's, it's about half an hour, 45 minutes from but it's the same kind of mountain range where my parents' place is. Um, <clears throat> anyway, the, my grandfather b uh, bought the newspaper in Cape and Bridge. And when I was a kid, I was obsessed with, like, Bigfoot and UFOs and ghosts and all that kind of stuff. So I was always reading... Arthur C. Clarke, and Daniel Cohen, and uh, The Mysteries of the Unknown, the Time Life, I think it was Time Life books that would come once a month. Um, uh, who else did I read? I read so many of these books. I mean, I just, I was obsessed with reading these books. And uh, the newspaper in Cape and Bridge had this story about Bigfoot, and that these two, uh, it was a father and a son, were up at the top of one of the mountains, I forget which one, but it wasn't that far from where we were, and claimed to have seen a large, hairy creature, eight feet tall, stomping around um, in the forest at the top of this, uh, this mountain, and they watched it for a couple of minutes, uh, before it disappeared into the thicket. Um, it went through and went over an old fence, and at the top of the old fence was barbed wire, and the, uh, barbed wire, um, the hair from this creature, animal, whatever you want to call it, um, the hair was actually picked off and was stuck to the barbed wire, so the father collected the hair, and, um, which really, his claims really went down the toilet for me when he was trying to sell the hair for $10,000 a strand, he was trying to sell this Bigfoot hair for 10 grand for one strand of this hair. Um, that kind of, at that point I was like, okay, this guy, they came up with a good tale. Um, why did I go this way? I should have just went through fucking, um, 95 that way, because the BW Parkway is always backed up when you get to this, this point. 
about like when you're like 20 minutes from DC it starts doing this um so anyway um are we all still alive here are we listening huh? yeah we're listening I'm sorry I'm just looking at the screen uh anyway um I was kind of when I read that, and then I had one of my books with me. It was a Daniel Cohen book about uh, Sasquatch. And I really started to get paranoid as a child because we were in the... I mean, we were in a very remote place at the time. Uh, just, you know, it was all um, uh, rivers and creeks and hollers and you know, so it was it was a very desolate place, wilderness wise, but you could get to it by truck. Um, the first night, um, my father we had a we had a um, fire going, and uh, my grandfather and my dad made I don't know hot dogs or something. I don't remember what it was, and. Um, <laughs> We uh, turned in, and the first night there was it was quiet. I slept all the way through. I remember waking up; it was really early in the morning. Um, and they started another day of digging by hand, digging these uh, holes to put these posts into and concrete them in. And um, uh, we uh, the second night. Um, my father, uh, we went to bed, and I would say around 2 o'clock in the morning, um, I woke up, and my dad had turned over, and he was looking at me, and he went like this, he went like this, and I'm like, what, I'm like, you know, what is going on? And, uh, you could hear the fire, um, it had burned out, but it was still crackling. And, uh, then we heard what sounded like someone walking around where the camp that we were in. Um, it wasn't woods, it was more like a field. So we cut a section of it. They brought a lawnmower and cut a section of it so we'd have a place to put our tents and everything um but there was something uh walking around our campground that sounded like a heavy uh it sounded like a bear like deep breaths and but it was it sounded more like it was on two feet instead of four feet um I immediately was like, it's fucking Bigfoot. Like, in my head, I was like, it's Bigfoot, it's Bigfoot. Um, my dad yelled out. My grandfather was asleep in the truck cap, um, in the back of the truck. There was a cap over the rear of the truck, and he was asleep inside of there. And uh, my dad thought it was my, my grandfather, so my dad's like, Dad, Dad, and couldn't hear anything. And then he's like, whoever's out there, I have a shotgun. And meanwhile, his shotgun was in the truck. It wasn't even in the tent. <laughs> so, um, whatever this, whatever was outside stopped and, uh, started to walk or really fast, uh, down the hill towards the river. Um, it passed through a thicket of just sticker bushes and um, something that I don't a human would not be able to do without severely cutting themselves up um, we heard it go into the, the into the river uh, the river was about six feet deep um, 
once you get to the bottom of the hill, you jump into the river. It's like six feet. The sting jumped into the river and then went across the river into the land across the river. It was uh, not woods. It was more like like uh, just like brush. Um, sticker bushes, little pine trees, stuff like that. Um, my dad jumped. We got out of the tent and um, my dad grabbed the rifle out of the truck and uh, a flashlight and we went to where this thing went through the brush and it was like the brush had been separated um and uh there was a smell of an animal in the air uh some kind of an animal um it had a smell it, it smelled like game like like a dirty animal that would be in the woods um we started looking around the the camp for um uh footprints but the temperature had gone down below freezing so uh, the ground was frozen so there was no no footprints at all um and to this day we don't know what the hell um that was that passed through our that passed through our, our, uh, tent that I got, damn it. Um, hold on, I gotta get this here. Vengeful Cowboy, hey buddy, hope you're having a great day. Thank you, Vengeful Cowboy, I appreciate it. I am having a great day. Well, so far, if I don't get murdered down here in, uh, Virginia, this phone is so hot that it's, like, boiling wonder if I could... Oh, you know what? Let me do this. Put this... Sorry, guys. Uh, my phone overheated. Um, so, I think we're back. Um, probably... Uh, the phone... Literally, as soon as I turned the air on, the phone said, uh... Um, too hot... Your phone temperature is too hot. It's the sun beating down on it. But I'm going to try this. So I'm going to put it here. Now that's pretty loud. So I'm going to try to lower the... I'm going to try to lower the... Okay. I think that might be better. Yeah, so there's cold air blowing on the phone. So that's what we needed. I'm so irritated about this fucking 295 bullshit that I'm like ready to fucking scream. So how long? 25 fucking miles of this. Oh, come on, man. Are you kidding me? Plus 48 minutes. Oh my god. I, like, I hate this fucking parkway. I, you would think Google would say, okay, well, there's a 50 minute backup. Maybe we should just hop on 95 from Baltimore. That would have been a lot easier. So, 25 miles to Richmond, and I have 40... Is this 47 or 4? I can't see it. You know why? Because my eyes have been on the phone all night and all morning. Alright, now we're moving a little bit. We're not even at... Uh, Casino, right? Did we pass that already? I can't remember. Right, I'm just 
and it's, it's, it's fine. There's nothing I can do about it anyway. I just, these long drives, man, are just like, ugh. So I get three hours, like three hours and 15 minutes down there, and then three hours and 15 minutes back. It's not exactly uh, fun when you're all alone, but I have all of you here with me. Well, I tell scary stories. That was the first scary story, the Bigfoot story. Though we don't know what it was. But whatever it was, it was very large. And uh, it sounded bipedal. And it was breathing. You could hear it breathing. And it was like... Whatever it was, it was big. Very big. Uh, I don't know. To this day, I don't know what it was. I really don't know. Um, I wanted to hear another funny... Well, this story is kind of funny. Um, so, if you guys watch Creeps and Monsters, the, the one about the... Uh, the uh, uh, Falk monster the Falk monster down in Falk, Arkansas. Actually, the, the the bog is outside of Falk, Arkansas. But Falk is really the only town that's around there. Um, okay, we're moving here. This is red, but we're, just, we're moving. So hopefully I can get to this goddamn 95 cells. This, uh, this guy who I, um, was kind of a fan on, on here, and, uh, he sent me a message, because I was bitching about, have, you know, the truck, I was like, where, because I don't really take the truck to the dealership, I don't think I have a warranty, I'm pretty sure I don't. But the dealership is so annoying to me. I mean, it's just like not <laughs> the service I used to get it when I had a BMW. When you go to BMW dealership, the service is like impeccable. But when you go to Dodge Ram, Chrysler, it's like oh my god, they don't even wash the truck when they're done. So this guy told me. Uh, he said, uh, his name is Dustin. He said, I'm a mechanic. I have a garage right near Brooklyn Park. If you want to come bring your truck here, I can do it. And I've been going to him for mm, maybe a year now. And uh, damn, does he do a good job on the truck. He just replaced the brakes and switched the tires and uh, did an oil change, uh, did the maintenance, the, the 50,000 maintenance. Or wait a minute, maybe it wasn't 50. Yeah, he did the 50,000 maintenance. Um, the truck runs great, yeah. And I finally got my registration. <laughs> my registration updated. Um, what is that number? Is it three minutes or Over four ninety. Oh, that's why. Okay. All right. So Google did send me the fastest way because four ninety five is backed up, which is no surprise. If any of you live in this area, you know four ninety five is a nightmare. So at least this is moving. Four ninety five has like seven lanes, and it's just stuck. I love having this little iPad with uh, with um, cell service on it. It's so convenient because then I can live stream and 
do directions on my iPad. But another thing, my phone is like shot. The battery in it, it doesn't last for shit. So I gotta get a new phone. I'm, I'll probably just get, I think the new phone is coming out uh, soon. Like the 15, I think it's coming out this month, maybe. Uh, so I'll probably just get that. Um, since I use it like professionally, I can use it as a tax write off. Everything is written off. But also, AT&T, um, when I trade this phone in, I'll get $1,000 off the new iPhone, which is what they did last time. I got $1,000 off the phone. So, like, you can't really beat that deal. <laughs> I don't know if it's open for everyone, but, um, yeah, the phone, if, so if the phone is like $1,800 or $1,700, I'll only pay $700 bucks for it, which is great. So they did that last time, but then my phone got stolen, uh, and I had to pay $300 to get it replaced, and then my phone got stolen again, or I lost it, I don't know what happened, so it was another $300, so by the time I was done paying to get the phone back, um, I had already spent into the money that I had saved, so, maybe AT&T was hoping that would happen or something. Mm. coffee, very important. Trying to wake up. I am awake. I'm just, you know. Um. For those of you who are not on Patreon, I'm going to sell Patreon right now. Patreon.com slash this is Dan Bell. Um. Five bucks a month, you get everything. Uh, videos, the quiet times, the podcast, uh, and there's a huge archive of stuff. Um, so when you get on there, you'll be, uh, dealing with the overwhelming sense of, oh my goodness, there's so much to watch and so much to see. Uh, so it's five bucks a month, patreon.com slash this damn bell, totally worth it. IMO, but the people who, my patrons who are here, will tell you that it's a great service, um, it's not, I don't like, um, people to look at it as donations, because it's really, you're paying for the amount of work I put into it every week, <laughs> which is, to, I'm always thinking of new ideas and stuff to put up on Patreon, and this last month, was difficult because I was not expecting the amount of sales on this is I it was I was totally taken by surprise because I thought, well, it, you know, I'll get like 10 orders or 20 orders, it ended up being over 100 orders, and uh, I had to uh, uh, print, continually print. Uh, every moment I had, and some of the, oh my god, the prints, so, I wasn't paying attention, I didn't have, there's not enough light in my office, and, uh, I'm gonna actually, this guy has a warehouse full of shit, I'm gonna ask him if he has some lamps, I'd love to get a halogen lamp for my office, to brighten it up, because it's just not bright enough, but, I printed out, like, 40 prints of the motel, Okay, um, the motel picture from from August. You can go on thisisdanbell.com to see it. Um, the photos, uh, I assume, it's a very dark. It uses a lot of black ink. The photos were sitting on top of each other, so they print sit on top, and it takes a while for them to print out. Um, I went, and the, the vacancy 
Uh, print also has, uses a lot of dark black colors because um, these are both night shots. And um, who? What is this? Sorry, guys. So anyway, um, I hope there's mods in here if there's any kind of trouble. It just doesn't really matter, does it? But anyway. Um, I uh, uh, was printing these photos out, and they were just stacking on top of each other. And I packed them all without closely, I just looked at them from my perspective in the sort of not a lot of light. And I said, oh, these look great. I'm putting them in the, in the cellophane. I always wear gloves. So when you get the photos, they have never been touched by my hands. Um, I always wear gloves. And when you get them, um, which I'm going to put a note in there, um, but when you get the order, don't get your fingerprints on the paper because they will the fingerprint will stay there um, and it will eventually probably affect the ink you always want to get a matte um, a frame with a mat in it because you don't want the glass smushing the picture down the picture needs a little bit of room to breathe um, and you uh, don't want to put it in bright light just you know regular room without sunlight blasting onto it, but these fucking photos, I packed like 40 orders, and then I went to grab one of the photos, and I looked, and I said, what is that, and it looked like, like an x-ray on it, like, um, like something had laid on top of it, and like, affected the ink, and that's exactly what happened, um, the ink comes out, the dark ink comes out, and it's very, very sensitive to temperature, so 40, almost, it was more than 40 of the uh, motel, and then 45 of the vacancies, that's almost 100, that's like 90 photos, were unusable. So, um, so I had to take, and, you know, the, the, the paper costs about, um, I think for a hundred sheets, it's like $75. So it's, it's really good paper, but, oh my God, man, I was like, I was like, you gotta be kidding me. So I had to go and print out. I could not keep up with the order. So now I put a little note and it says two to four weeks for delivery because I, I just could not keep up. And I was like um, struggling to get orders filled. But I got them all filled. And now I have a whole new set of orders that I have to sit down and um, I've already started, but there's new, new photos. Um, and I started selling five by sevens for. 15, but right now the 5x7s are really disgusting because they're, um, come on, come on, come on, all right, I stay on to my, uh, okay, 17 miles, um, so yeah, that was a little frustrating to have to throw away 80, photos, and then uh, a friend of mine said, why don't you sell, you know, them as off, so I'm like, no, I can't do that, I want them to be perfect when they go out, so I just stick them in a shredder, so I don't make any mistakes, put them in a package, and send them out, but that was really bad, but I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me, I was so happy to get 40 orders done, and then I'm like, oh, here we go the first roadblock, <laughs> but at least now I know, so when I, when I, uh, when I use the black ink, I gotta be careful with the, so I bought, like, a, a an extra table, 
and then I have like racks on it so when each photo is done it goes into one of the racks but I have to do them all by hand the dark photos the photos that aren't dark are fine I love this month's photos the fucking Warren Mall photo is my is is my favorite photo I've ever taken in malls. Um, I took it back in twenty. Oh, sixteen, maybe twenty sixteen, twenty fifteen, somewhere around there. Um, I went to Warren Mall in Pennsylvania and walked in and could not believe how vintage the mall was and they had a Bonton store with the original looked like early 70s late 60s font letters and um, and it, I just I was with, with these like these uh, green tiled fountains and I, it was just incredible. Um, and I took the picture, and people always ask, uh, who took that photo? When was it taken? Because they think it was taken, like, 50 years ago. And it it was taken in 2015 or something. But um, unfortunately, of course, the mall uh, has torn... There, It's gone now. They tore it down. Um, Bonton's still there, but they have, they modernized, so they, they took out the mall, but left Bonton, I think that's, and, and now it's, instead of Warren Mall, it's called Warren Center, so what fun that is, but I have a whole video, a Dead Mall series video of that mall, and, uh, that was, uh, that was a, a really... Gina, hey Gina, uh, hi Dan, thanks for listening to my story the other day, drive safe, Gina, of course, um, Gina and I were talking, I don't, I don't want to say what we were talking about, but we were talking on Patreon, um, about, uh, well, I don't want to say what it's about, but Gina knows, Gina knows what I speak of. But yes, thanks, Gina. I appreciate it. Um, so anyway, those are my woes, my studio woes of like working in the studio and my studio and uh, making my prints, which um, people have already sent me photos of their prints framed and up on the wall. I, I'm just, it's really quite. It's something I never thought, like, that people all over the world would have my photos on their walls. That, to me, is very odd. Like, I sold, like, Romania. I sold pictures in Romania, Japan, all over Europe, uh, New Zealand, Australia, China, um... God, I mean, just think of a place, and I probably have sold a picture there. Um, it's just amazing, man. Yeah. My mom was, I had packages in the car, and the one on top was, I think it was Japan. I actually sold a bunch of pictures in Japan, and it was very strange. And, uh, like some in Tokyo, some outside of Tokyo, so know what that's all about, but, um, just an amazing response from people, it, it's, it's crazy, but, uh, I just never imagined there would be a day where people wanted to buy my pictures, I always thought, uh, yeah, I've been taking pictures a long time, even back when I was... I, I think I started taking pictures when I was... I think I was 12. My grandmother had a... 
a Polaroid, an SX-70 camera, and she gave it to me, and then we went and got film, and I started taking photos with the SX-70, and learned very quickly, and uh, took a lot of, I mean, photo, I used to take photos all the time, so I just love taking pictures, I love taking Polaroids, Polaroids are my favorite, I was just so heartbroken when they shut down, I'm so glad that they're like back, they're doing well, by the way, selling those uh, Polaroid packs. But, um, I have a new video ready, um, oh shit, I, oh my goodness, who delighted me with a $50 super chat, let's see, I can even open the damn thing without killing myself, oh my god, come on, alright, there we go, uh, Rob, hey Rob Castle, um, whatever happened to the Children's Asylum, uh, whatever happened to Uplands, I've been watching you for eight, six, eight years? Damn, Rob, thank you so much, I appreciate it. Um, the Children's Asylum, uh, is gone. Um, that was a hard one to deal with. Uh, it caught on fire one night. Probably arson. Um, fuck. Did I take the wrong way? I think I did. Maybe I did. Did I or didn't I? Did I or didn't I? Please say it's the wrong way. Sorry about that, Rob. Uh, so, anyway, um, I, uh, uh, the Children's Island burned down. I, I got pictures that somebody took of the blaze. It was really bad. Um, and then the next day, the city couldn't wait to get the bulldozers up there to rip it down, which is exactly what they did. And within just a few days, um, it was a patch of grass and nothing left. And uh, I think the city uh, gets tired of these uh, people uh, fighting them to restore or save these properties. And when they burn down, the city's like, oh, thank God, we don't have to talk to them anymore. It's gone, it's over. Um, that was a beautiful place, and, uh, what a shame, I mean, what a loss, seriously, I almost, I almost blame myself for that, it's one I feel guilty about, um, when I first started filming Urbex, uh, abandoned houses, places, um, I didn't think that there wasn't a lot of people doing it, so I never imagined that other people would go to these places that I was going to, and, uh, the Children's Asylum proved my theory wrong, um, every fucking person started going there, and, uh, I took people there, too, um, I kind of regret doing the video, but at the same time, at least there is video of the place, because, um, it's gone, 
it's gone forever. Um, which is, you know, just heartbreaking. Uh, cause I, I loved that property. Um, until I saw the video and I saw someone fucking peeking at me through a keyhole that was a little unnerving. That was amazing. I put the video, I wasn't even paying, like, I, I was paying attention, but I wasn't, like, reading into it like the audience generally does. Like, they'll really read into it, and they'll find little things, or hear a voice, or, you know, whatever they they find, and I, I just can't, I'm like, you know, people are like, you fake those voices, and I'm like, what voices are you fucking talking about? I don't even hear what the fuck you're talking about, um, or like, you got, you fake the paranormal stuff in your videos, and I'm like, there is no paranormal stuff in my fucking video, I never, it's not about ghosts, it's about a fucking abandoned, uh, property, but that's what they watch, and they find stuff, and they think, you know, they see ghosts, or whatever in the video, um, the only video that I have that I think is paranormal is on the, this channel, it's on the Filmin channel, and it, it was in, um, I believe Will Krapinski and myself were in West Virginia. And there was an old abandoned factory. And I was shooting on my on my phone because I would shoot the video and then directly upload it to YouTube from my phone. So I didn't do any cuts, anything. It was kind of like, that was like what this channel, the filming channel was all about. Um, just, you know, now I edit the videos and stuff. But uh, back then, I would just shoot it and put it up. Um, Occasionally, I would put up, uh, you know, a regular um, cut video, but most of the time it was these uploads, which I wish I hadn't done, because they were all in 720, and they really don't look that good, but we were at this old factory where they made, I believe, uh enamelware, if I'm not mistaken, I may be wrong about that, it was in a town, I can't remember the town name, whatever, I, there was an open little sliver in the wall of this building, there was no way else in, and I put the camera in the sliver, and I had a mic on the camera, an external mic, which was wonky at best. You plug it into the phone, it was not that great. Um, this is old technology. The new cameras, or the new uh, mics for, for phones, if you spend a little bit of money, they're actually really good. But this was not, this was an expensive mic, but it didn't work that well. I'm filming, and I notice, uh, you can see me, I'm like, what is that? And it's, I just look at it, I see it on my phone screen, but it's this dark, uh, shape that moves into the frame, and then moves back, I believe, out of the frame, into the darkness, it's a shadow, um, I think on here, I, I think I labeled it, like, ghost, uh, did we see a ghost or something? It's on this channel. Um, and I still, to this day, people are like, oh, it's Will walking behind you. But it wasn't. It, it wasn't. Um, he wasn't behind me. He was all the way down at the other end of the building. Um, he wasn't walking back and forth behind me. Um, and the way I was filming, the sliver, it was just a small opening, it was not some large thing that you could squeeze through, it was a small opening, um, but that was a really fucking bizarre, uh, incident, whatever, I, I, to this day, I don't know, I'm trying to think of other times, I've had experiences that I 
believe are paranormal. Um, hold on, I missed this super chat. And I'm sorry, but Invisible Invisible Exploration is back. Dan, you imagine what the person on the other side of the door was thinking. They were probably scared as fuck. I don't know. I, I, I just don't know. Oh, here. Jen. Hey, Jen. Apocalypse Jen's here. She has the link to that video if you want to go check it out real fast. Um, thank you, Invisible. I, I really don't know about the Children's Asylum and uh, you know, I had received, and I don't know if this was trolling or whatever, but I received a message from this young kid who lived in, like, Harford County, and he's like, oh, man, we're going to the Children's Asylum, and I begged him not to, I said, please don't go up there, there's somebody staying in that house, and I don't know if they're dangerous or not, and, uh, I said, I really don't think it's a good idea. Well, allegedly, the kid went anyway. And his mother sent me, like, a, an email and claimed that she reported me to the police and to YouTube and that her son and his friend were chased through the house by a man with a butcher knife. Um who, strangely enough, I had not mentioned him, but one of the neighbors up there told me that this man who used to be a patient there came back uh, to stay there when he, I guess he was homeless or whatever, and it was a place that he, I guess, had a connection to, and so he went back and was staying there and so, I guess protecting the property or protecting the place. Um, so this this mother of God. Now I don't know if this is true or not. I I don't know if her child was chased out of this building. I do know that I did my part. And I said don't go. Like I tell people now the places I go now, people are like, you couldn't pay someone to go to the places I go to now. Um, like, the Devil's Chair video, I mean, that place was absolutely terrifying, um, and I wouldn't recommend anyone try to find it and go there, because it is not, <laughs> it's not worth it, um, but back to, um, the question, uh, Uplands, Uplands is still standing, but it's in such condition that it is literally starting to fall apart. It, it, the, the steps that go upstairs are collapsed. Uh, it's too dangerous to get upstairs now, so it's only a small section of the house. The library, the sitting room, and the foyer would be the only places you could really go to in the house. Even the kitchen in the back, which I believe is an add-on, um, was, uh, is, is collapsed into the basement, so that house is, is, uh, completely done for, falling apart, um, it, it's, it's really it's something, uh, <laughs> I went there, um, oh, uh, when my friends from Australia came in, um, Warner Adventures and, uh, Cruise Adventures, uh, came to Baltimore to meet me, and, um, I took them to Uplands, um, and, uh, I was shocked at how bad the, the property has become. I mean, it's just completely falling apart, um, really bad, so one burned down, one is falling apart, but could definitely burn down any time now, it just depends you know, if some kid wants to go in there and start a fire, the whole place will be torched. Um, they're not even going to try to save it or stop the fire. They'll let it burn and just control it. Uh, but uh, even the Sellers Mansion, another place I visited uh, on the Filming Channel, 
which is not too far from Uplands, uh, also has burned, caught on fire. I don't know how that place caught on fire because it was so, um, collapsed inside. I couldn't imagine someone actually went in there and, and was poking around or smoking crack or whatever they were doing. But, uh, that burned down, so that's just a lot. I actually have the number, the the number that was up on the um, above the door. I actually have it it's in the back of the truck in a bag. I saved it, so we'll see about. Uh, okay, now let me open this. Uh, we have here uh, Rob again. What about Uplands, Rob? I think I just answered your question, but Rob, thank you again. Again, uplands falling apart, um, terrible condition. You know, when I went there, I was fortunate enough to be able to go upstairs and to go to the attic and investigate the whole place, film the whole place. Um, unfortunately, you know, time moves moves on, and the place just slowly decays and falls apart and uh, that's exactly what's happening plus it's just been fucking destroyed by kids going in there and ripping it apart so um a mess a total mess um so let me tell you uh let's do another scary story shall we let's do another one um There's the Washington Monument. Right over there. You can see the top of it. Poking up through the sky. Um, this used to way, uh, back in the day, this is the way we used to come to go to tracks. You would take this exit right here, and then tracks was on the other side over here. In one of the worst neighborhoods you could possibly imagine. It was so scary parking and running to get to the front of tracks where you were safe. But now it's all luxury condos and I mean they totally it's like ridiculous what it's been turned into. Like they have apartments there. I think the apartments are like there's the Capitol building. I think the apartments are like Start at like thirty five hundred a month, and that's just for uh, a one bedroom, I, a tiny one bedroom. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Trainee, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Trainee. I, it was so funny, you know, I was, I know, trainee, I'm not saying that, you know, the derogatory, now derogatory word about transgender people, but speaking of, um, I was sitting on the steps of the, the building next door to my apartment building, because uh, we don't have steps that you can, like, sit on, and, um, I was sitting there with Wee Wee, I was on the phone, and this guy walks by and he's like, hey, how are you? And I was like, hey. And we just smiled. I just thought, oh, it's just like a nice guy like walking by saying hi or whatever. But he's actually this like crazy drag queen that I would hang out with in the bar. Um, that uh, I didn't recognize him. I've never seen him out of drag, so I, I had no idea that it was him. I didn't know until I saw him in his partner who is in a wheelchair so that's when I recognize him because his partner is I love his partner I've talked to him all the time he's a lot of fun his partner has been paralyzed now for a couple of years they were at a party and his partner had a few beers and he went to dive in the pool and he hit the bottom and uh, it, he broke his uh, spine now he's in a wheelchair it's just crazy. 
imagine that. It's fucking awful. He's only like in his 20s, I think. So that's a hard. But he, the guy. I mean, the guy. You know, he's uh, stronger than I would be. That would be fucking. That would be a lot to handle. Hey, Rob! Again, Rob Castle. Dan, great. Dan. Um, Gates. What? I can't see, Rob. Dan. Oh, uh, Getz's meat is entirely gone. Uh, yes. Except for... The building across the street, which I visited in the uh, the video called uh, what did it call? No Hope or something? I can't remember what I called. Everyone's like, you kind of come up with better titles, and I'm like, what am I supposed to do in all caps? Like, found drugs, almost died. I mean, I don't know what to do. Like, I I don't I don't do those kind of titles. I think that they're so ridiculous, but I probably would get more views if I wrote a title like that. Almost died. Almost robbed. Found drugs. Forcefully filled with cum. (laughs) Jesus Christ. I mean, I don't know what to say. I know there's other channels and they're you know, and it shows some, like, stunned, you know, the channel, the person on the channel is, like, you know, they're, like, they're, like, and, and then they put themselves with a background, and I just can't, it's, to me, that is so fucking tacky, I just can't do it, like, I saw one the other day, and the guy is so fucking ugly, I mean, he didn't, he was beat with the ugly stick, the guy is not good looking, and, um, <laughs> uh, you put this thing up there, and I'm like, who is the, f- who the fuck is gonna watch this? Um, but apparently a lot of people like his work, like his videos, but if I were him, I mean, he has the face for radio, much like myself, I have a face for podcasting. Turn this over. I am not taking this way home. Fuck it. I'm staying on goddamn... Actually, no. Maybe I will take this way home because... 495... Though, on the way back, 495 should not be that bad. There is one of those... uh, I don't know what they're called. They're not Trans Ams. They're like... Anyway, the guy's bumper is falling off. It's literally scraping the road. It's like that muscle car that everyone drives now. Even my sister's husband bought one. Okay, here we go. Off 295. Now we're getting on 95 South at National Harbor. Oh, fun day. It's going to be, when I'm driving home, people are going to be like, what the fuck is he? What is in his truck? What are those chairs? (laughs) Oh, I can't wait to see them. Unless, when I get there, I'm going to be robbed. Robbed of what, though? I don't have anything. Robbed of my morals and decency. That is questionable. So anyway, um, I 
let's go into another scary story. And Rob, thank you so much for your contribution. I usually answer questions for free, but if you feel so inclined to want to pay, they can have me answer a question. Well, totally. Oh, oh Christ. There's no fucking way I'm going to be awake tonight. Every time Dan and I go out, I'm tired. It's so annoying. Oh, we're in Virginia. Virginia is for lovers. They still use that phrase. What does that mean? diagnose a car from just watching a live stream, I'm very impressed, but trust me, I just talked about my my car, my truck guy, Dustin, does an excellent job. Um, so anyway, back to what I was saying. Um, about the place that I got into that was Kaufman's department store the former Kaufman's department store, which is now the Nevermore Haunt. They'll be opening soon. Uh, I have yet to go to that event. Uh, but apparently a lot of people enjoy it. Uh, maybe I'll go this year and check it out. I wanted to go to some, like, haunted house things this year. You know, like, a Field of Screams I've been to a few times. It's, that's a really good one, but I'd like to try something... A little bit different. You know who I envy is Jacob the Carpetbagger, because he's going to all these places um, for the whole month, I think. <laughs> he's just doing state fairs and haunted houses. Haunted house attractions. But good for him. Is that the easy... Pass lane because I want to be in there. So anyhow, thank you everyone. Rob, thank you for your contribution. Um, Kaufman's was uh, an old department store in in Old Town Mall. Uh, it, originally, it wasn't Old Town Mall. It was it was uh, a street. No. <laughs> had markets on it. The city tore down everything. Because Old Town Mall never worked. It was a failure. Um, but Coffins was really a cool place to go. It, you could see the old department store in there. There was still stuff in there to kind of see the old department store. Um, the nighttime video I did there uh, where it was snowing and it was really creepy. Um, that was a fun video. Uh, but the guys who ran the haunt, I met them. Um, I don't recall how I met them. I, I 
met one of the guys, uh, I, I, I really don't recall how we met, and he lived on, um, uh, Chase Street, I think. No. No, it wasn't Chase. It was, uh, Preston Street. Um, and next door to him was the trapped and terrified apartment building where I ended up shooting Trapped and Terrified. Well, first I shot, and if you want, you can go right now and see Trapped and Terrified on Patreon for free. So you can go over and sign up on Patreon for free and then go watch Trapped and Terrified if you want to see it again. It's public for everyone to go watch. Um, Trapped and Terrified, as you know, was like this big, you know, I made this like short horror movie. I didn't realize that it was going to affect people so deeply, uh, but it really, uh, scared the shit out of people, um, <laughs> so, so, so I, I ended up, hold on, I can look at this room. an hour and 30 minutes away. Oh my god. This trip is so much better talking on a live stream. Jesus. Alright. I don't need to take that right now. The road's clear. Um, okay, so, uh, Alien Train. Uh, hey, Dan. I, I'm from the U.S. I'm visiting Poland to see family. Watching your videos while I'm here. Love them. Keep... Love them. Keep on coming. Love you. Love you, too, Alien Train. So sweet. Thank you so much. Have fun in Poland. I've never... I've never been to Poland. I want to go. I would love to go there and check out Poland. Um, hold on. Oh, it's damn good coffee. Oh, damn it, that coffee's good. So, anyway, I have to remind this guy. 40 minutes that I'm 40 minutes away. So, 45 minutes from now, I'm going to send him a text and tell him that I am going to be there in 45 minutes. And then when I get there, you guys, I'm going to keep you on live stream in case... I get murdered, uh, or accosted, you guys will be on live stream. God damn. Yikes. Don't do that. Fuck. There's shit flying out of a truck. It's like debris. And people are fucking losing it. Damn. I'm getting over it. Cause this is whoever this is truck is, it's going, this shit's everywhere. There was one time I, oh, hold on, let me read this real quick before I, uh, Rob again, Dan, how about the factory? Any new classic buildings coming up? Okay, Rob, I'm sorry. I keep, this is like driving and then paying attention to this and remembering what I said. Um, the factory. 
uh, the meat factory, and then after this, I'm going to tell another scary story. The meat factory was undoubtedly one of the scariest places I had ever been in. Um, it was the kind of place where I remember the first time we went in and we came out and we like hugged one another. We were like, oh my God, we survived. That was a scary ass building. It just had very weird energy to it. And when you really got into the building, the scariest thing about it was we got lost. Uh, we, th- we were going through holes in walls to get to another section of the building. There were Somebody had pounded a hole through the wall. Oh my god, look at all that crap. Jeez, what is this? Some, something dropped out of a truck and it's like it's everywhere. Um, so we, we, uh, we, uh, toured basically the whole place, but there was this one time we went through holes in the wall, we went through a few holes, and then we got to the other side of the wall and noticed that there were holes everywhere, and when we started walking around, we were on this giant ramp, I guess where they brought trucks down this ramp into the basement to load the truck up, and then they would come back up this ramp. We're on this ramp, and uh, we're done. The basement was flooded. Um, at least that part of it was. And we went back to get through the holes, and we couldn't figure out which hole we went through. So we're going into, into uh, uh, these, like, anti-rooms where you don't recognize where you were. Um, and the worst part about it, the rooms had about two inches of water on the floor. And under that two inches of water was ice, just a sheet of ice underneath of it. So imagine walking on ice with water on top of it. And you've got a camera, and you've got lights, and you, I mean, it was a nightmare. It was truly... I really got panicked because I'm like, if we can't find a way out, the only way out was a bay door, and the bay door was was just locked shut. And I'm like, the worst comes the worst, we could bang on it, and somebody might call the cops, and they'll get us out. But um, I didn't, of course, did not want to do that. So um, we eventually figured out. It took us about 15 minutes. It was a really scary 15 minutes. Even though in my head, I'm like, I'm like, the building is not that big, but it was. That's the fucked up part. That building was tremendous. Um, There had to be over a mile of passages and and hallways. uh, you, You just, you would find little rooms with like, you know, that somebody had obviously had a shop in or something. I mean, it was just so fucking weird in there. And the cars parked in places, and you're like, how the fuck did this car get here? Um, I never, ever thought that they would tear that down, because I just said, it's such a huge job. Um, but they had about ten bulldozers, about ten caterpillars out there, with the long bucket on it, and they ripped, they ripped it, and it took months for them to finally get it all down. It took months um, of bulldozing to get the four stories or five stories, however many stories it was, down. Um, I was there on a day. I did a live stream, and I, I it's, it's got to be on this channel where. It was just the right kind of weather. It had gotten warm outside. And the inside of the building, the ice, that this frozen concrete building, the ice started to melt with this warm weather. 
there was a fog pouring out of this building. It looked like it was on fire. This thick fog just pouring out of the windows and the doors. And um, I just thought that was the coolest thing um, that day when I saw that. I just thought, man, that is so awesome. But uh, what they do? Crash into each other. Um, they tore it down for whatever reason. They did not tear down the other building. Now, the other building across the street, the one that has the Gets Meets sign on top of it, um, I had never been in there. I went to go into this uh, building. I tried a few times. Every time I would go, I would hear dogs. Uh, on the other side of the door. And, uh... So I was like, fuck this. Uh, there's pit bulls in here. And, um... I knew that people were going in and out because there were footsteps. There were footprints in the mud. So I'm like, I'm like, it's a homeless person with dogs that is staying here. Um... So at least they were being fed and everything. Because um, you could tell they weren't. I saw one of the dogs. It looked, I mean, it was healthy. It wasn't skinny. He was in good shape. He, didn't, he wasn't bit up or anything. Um, we're going to hit another traffic jam. I'm going to kill myself. Uh, so... Uh, when I went back to that meat factory for... Oh, and the one time I went and it, I got the door open and an alarm went off. It was like... So the person who was staying there uh, rigged it up so they would know if somebody was coming in. I guess they are trying to protect themselves from other homeless people. Um, when I went back to the building... Uh, the, it was totally different. The smell of garbage. I've never smelled anything so bad when we got near the big hole in the wall uh, that was inside of this meat factory building. And this, that side of the, the meat factory uh, was where they received either live livestock or uh, already butchered livestock. I'm not sure. But the railroad tracks are over there. So I don't know if they had live animals uh, or if they were already getting processed uh, processed meats that they would then process into, you know, sellable sized uh, steaks and stuff to distribute to stores. so much traffic up here. I can't believe it. I'm never going to get my chairs. <laughs> um, it's already 5 o'clock. There's no fucking way I'm going out tonight. Besides, I want to sit at home and look at my chairs. I don't want to go out. Um, anyway, uh, so we finally got in. I did not realize that the condition inside of the building was so bad. It was deplorable in there. Um, and I noticed uh, someone was organizing. Now, when I say organizing... Damn, that's an apartment building. That place is huge. Um, we went in and I noticed organizing. Organizing is something that I just refer to people who are on drugs, specifically uh, 
Oh, uh, crack. Or methamphetamines. Uh, I've seen it happen before. These, these, uh... People on crack, they, like, organize stuff in a weird way. It's just so weird. But I guess they're so wired that they just have to, like, organize shit. Um... So that's what I saw when I went in there. And I'm like, there is no fucking way that there is somebody currently staying in this building. That there was water on the floor, there was mud, the, the, the uh, air quality was toxic, uh, not healthy to breathe at all. And um, so I, I was just like, there's no way. And then I look over and I see a man. And I'm like... I've just had, uh, suddenly a sick feeling in my stomach, and I said, that man is, has to be dead, there's no way that he's, uh, alive, and I zoomed in on him, and I'm looking, and I'm like, well, he, he had, uh, he did not look healthy, I mean, his skin uh, and I noticed he had all white around his lips. Um, so, which is from smoking rock. And, uh, I told staff, I said, there's a man here. And then we looked over and, uh, are we disturbing you? And the guy is just like so fucking out of it that he can barely like lift his head up. I mean, I, I the guy's sleeping on a fetid mattress with the filthy wet blankets and sheets and um, such deplorable conditions that I, I don't, I would rather sleep on a bench than or an alley than sleep inside of that building. Like, there's no way I could do it. I mean, your lungs would just be filled with mold and toxic uh, gas and shit that's in there. Whatever's in the air is going into your lungs. So I can't imagine you, you'd probably be sick all the time. Though, you're inhaling crack, which uh, is probably worse than the air quality. So I guess you're just another thing you're inhaling that was bad for you, but, um, we went in and started going up, we went, we went up the stairs, uh, and, uh, when I got up the stairs, I started to have a panic attack <laughs> because, I was like, I need air. Like, I felt like I was suffocating. And I just was thinking of that man the whole time. I'm like, I literally felt like I was suffocating. I'm like, I've got to get the fuck out of here. Like, I'm, I'm losing it. And, uh... I, uh, got to the top of the steps... Looked into the room. Um, all the ceiling had fallen, fallen, so it was all over the floor. And uh, it just hit me. I saw a bat, and I'm like, "There's no open windows." And that feeling of like I'm gonna fucking pass out, and I couldn't go any further. I, I said, "I gotta get out of here," and I ran out of the building. The man freaked me out. I thought we'd seen a dead body. And then I was just thinking the whole time, like, how can you breathe in here without any kind of mat of protection? Um, you really, you really, really have to be, like, so fucking deep in addiction that you would choose to stay in a fucking dump. I mean, I, I, a dump would be more, uh, it would be healthier to sleep in than that fucking building. 
So, I don't know if there's plans to tear that building down. I have no idea. Um, possibly, at some point in the future, they're going to tear it down. Um, I won't be going back. That's for sure. I got the footage I needed. No, no reason to go back. As far as uh, new places to film and what I have planned, I don't have any plans. Um, basically, I say, okay, today I'm going to go shoot a video. And I get in the car or the truck and I drive around the city. And uh, you'll pass something and I'll be like, oh, the door's open. Or, oh, someone ripped the board off or whatever. And then... I pull over. Uh, <sighs> Sorry, guys. I park. And, um... Then I, I, uh... Poke my head in, and if it looks promising, I grab my equipment and head on in for a peek around. Um... If it doesn't look promising, then I leave. Um, or film a video for this channel, which is something that, you know, that uh, I do. If, you know, if, if, if I can film even a short video for this channel. Um, or uh, film a video to put on Patreon. So, though I'm trying to really do early releases on Patreon and then release it onto the filming channel after it's been on Patreon for a week or something. But, yeah, so, um, I'd really like to go to out of town, uh, I know I'm going to Milwaukee, um, the reason I haven't been traveling a lot, besides going through what I, you know, my sort of grief-stricken depression in the last couple of years. Um, I got divorced, and my dogs uh, came to live with me, and uh, I am always home. Now, Dice, unfortunately, um, had a problem uh, back in December where his hind legs just suddenly stopped working, and, uh, it was a genetic, whoops, now, how the hell is this phone at 20% when I have it plugged in, anyway, Dice, uh, um, had a genetic issue, and, uh, unfortunately, um, I had to make a really tough decision to put him down, and I still feel a lot of guilt about it, um, I was actually reading about other people who feel guilt about putting their pet down, because I guess it's just unavoidable, like, you just you're going to feel guilt because it just, that's the way it felt. it felt. I felt guilty. But I listened to the vets. Um, you know, two, two separate vets said the same thing. They just said if, you know, they do the operation and everything that chances are so low, and even if it, uh, it is successful, he will not be able to run, he won't be able, he'll be able to walk around slowly, and, um, it was just really sad, it was a sad time, um, but, uh, Mama recovered. She actually didn't even seem sad about it. She was like, oh, I'm number one again. Um, 
so mama's doing very well she's nine years old she's uh she's a great little girl um but my parents watch my dog my sister and her husband are living with my parents right now because they sold their home in Georgia and they're moving to um Virginia and so they're staying with my parents while they um try to find a, a house um but my sister's dog is psychotic and I don't want mama down there while she's there so I was gonna go to Milwaukee but I can't go until my sister leaves <laughs> Until she's gone with a damn dog. So I can go on a trip. But it's so rare that I get a trip to go to 84A and 66 84A and 66 And 20 minutes. I'm going to send him a text in 20 minutes. Now... tell you another creepy story uh, now that we've gotten all of Rob's questions out of the way it's time for a creepy story let's let me tell this story so I'm trying to think of a good one but I'll tell you a paranormal or what I think is a paranormal story this is a true story this really happened so I'm not lying I'm not making it up this is a real story um, I forgot you have to pull over. You have to change lanes for cops in Virginia. It should be that way everywhere, but it's not. They don't do that in Maryland. Okay. Um, this was about... Fifteen years ago, maybe. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen years ago. Fifteen years ago. 23, 2010. Yeah, it was like 15 years ago. Um, I had met this uh, ghost group. Rob, again, all of my questions, I have not begun to acquire. <laughs> well, Rob, whenever you're ready to ask another question. Okay, listen. Thank you, Rob. Ghost story time. Please, no super chats while I'm doing this. Um, I met this ghost group, and they had, they were going to this place called Fort Mifflin. And Fort Mifflin is a revolutionary war era fort that is right next to the uh, Philadelphia airport. It's actually, if you take off from Philly, there's someone who was flying who had to fly off the road to avoid hitting the back of somebody. Another cutting traffic jam. My God, how many fucking traffic jams are we going to hit? Oh, my God, I hate this. Ugh. I'm going to get out of the truck and walk. Okay, so... Um, Fort Mifflin. Uh, allegedly very haunted. 
you know, I have a couple stories about this place that these are real, actually happened stories. Um, I went there with my friend. My friend came with me. We went for a night uh, hunt, a ghost hunt or whatever. So it was about maybe six, seven people. It wasn't that many people. And, um, uh, hold on. Someone just, you know, someone just, Rob again, Rob. Why no super chats? I, am I annoying? No, you're not annoying, Rob. I'm just trying to tell a story. Oh, and thank you, Brandon, Brandon W, for your purchase at thisisdanbell.com. I just want to tell the story. Okay, so we were there. Nothing happened. I mean, this is dead. We're, you know, they have this thing called the casemates where they used to store munitions, and then they turned the casemates into prison cells where they would keep uh, groups of prisoners behind these in these little rooms. Uh, it was very swampy there, and people got bitten up by mosquitoes. There was disease. It was very bad. A lot of people died there. Um, so, we were there. We didn't hear anything. Uh, nothing happened all night. It was just, you know, it was like whatever. Um, we came out of the casemates. We were getting ready to leave my friend and I. It was probably 3 in the morning or something. But we were driving back to Baltimore, so we wanted to leave. Getting tired. And, uh, we were walking back to the place where everyone had their stuff and, you know, bags, purses, all that kind of stuff. And we started rifling through everyone's purse to steal money and jewelry. No, I'm just kidding. We didn't do that. <laughs> we didn't do that. Um, over to our right was a entrance. Small hallway that when you walk in, there's the, the men's room right there. And then you turn left, women's room. The hallway's maybe 10 feet long. And at the end of the hallway, there's a phone, a pay phone. Um, out of the corner of my eye, I saw someone standing in the, the doorway in front of the men's room. Uh, and I looked over, and whatever it was quickly retreated to the left, down this hallway, towards the ladies' room. And it, the, the lights were off and everything, so I'm like, who the fuck is that? I thought it was somebody playing a joke on us. Um, we walk over there, and I told John, I said, I, I saw someone uh, run down to the ladies' room. And I said, there's got to be somebody in the ladies' room. I said, if there's not, then I saw a ghost. And we went and opened the door, and there was nobody in there. But the worst, the craziest thing that happened, the fucking phone on the wall starts ringing. The pay phone. Uh, we're just standing there looking at each other like, what the fuck? This phone starts to ring. And I... I said, I'm going to pick it up. And I picked up the phone, and... It was just, it was like, it was, it was nothing on the other end, but a little bit of static. So, I'm like, that that's crazy. Creepy. And, um, we ended up going to collect our stuff, and the caretaker was in there getting coffee, and his wife, uh, I don't know if they still watch over the place, but a caretaker and his wife had pretty much run around the place at that time, and I told them, I said, does that pay phone in the, by the bathrooms, does that still work, and they're like, no, 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 that was, that was cut off 
years ago, when they, they said when cell phones got popular, they cut it off because, you know, what was the point of paying for it? And, uh, I said, does it ring? And they're like, no, there's no, we've never heard it ring. I said, well, it just rang. And I told them what had happened, and they were like, they were like, that's crazy. I said, well, they, and my friend is a complete skeptic, and he was like, that was really weird. He's like, if that was a coincidence, that was some coincidence, because it was right when we had the bathroom door open, and I'm like, there's nobody in here. And then all of a sudden the phone rings and we're just like, what the fuck? Um, That was really cool. That was awesome. Uh, I had an even more dramatic experience at um, at, uh, Fort Mifflin. Uh, Again, when I went back, because I was just like so amazed by this place, but... uh, uh, Penny Black, scary, Dan, I'll have to sleep with my nightlight, well, thank you, honey, I have even a scarier tale to tell you, so, I went back to Fort Mifflin, I think it was my, I think I went a total of three times, I went once, nothing happened, then the payphone incident, and then this incident was, I mean, i I don't know how to describe it, but I'll tell you what happened. Um, I was there with my friend Valerie. Uh, we had known each other since we were teenagers. And, uh, we, uh, it was late. Again, probably two in the morning, something like that. Um, we walked back to the casemates. Uh, there was a group of people in there, and then they left, and then they said, okay, we were taking turns, basically, going in. Um, Val and I walked in, and we, you go in, and then you make, you go down this one hallway, and then the casemate kind of turns, the hallway turns to the right, and casemate, I think it's number five, is at the end, which is, like, supposed to be the most haunted one. As we turned, um, all of a sudden, we see this, uh, golf ball-sized blue, bluish light, uh, dance across the ceiling, um, in front of us. This thing, it just, like, went, woo and then it stopped. Almost as if somebody took a flashlight and just went like that on the ceiling and then turned it off. And we both were just like, what the fuck? Like, what was that? And as we went into the casemate, it happened again. This ball appeared on the wall and it moved on the wall, you know, really just like this. It was just doing this and then it went up to the ceiling of the casemate and disappeared. And I had a recorder going and I said, I said, was that you? I said, who was that? Was that you? And then you hear this clear as day voice that I had to call Val and ask her, was there anyone? I I knew there wasn't But I said, was there anybody else in there? Because it was such, the voice was so clear. It's on Patreon, the EVP video, I'm pretty sure. If it's not, it'll be on there. I'll put it up tomorrow. But maybe it's on filming. No, it's not, I don't think. I think it's only on Patreon. But anyway, um, this voice comes through, and it sounds like a very tired man. And he just says, that's me. And it's, it has the echo of the room. It's clear. It's, you didn't have to go and like adjust the, the, you know, how people are always like, oh, did you get it? And they adjust it and it just sounds ridiculous. 
You don't have to do anything to it. It's literally right there on the tape. This voice says, that's me, after I, I say, was that you? Um, so that's not the end. Uh, this guy who I used to hang out with, uh, ghost hunting, he moved away, but his name was Andrew. Uh, he was up there too, and he came back, uh, to sit with us, and, uh, I we told him what happened about the, the thing dancing around on the ceiling, that light, and, uh, we're sitting there, and inside the casemate, there is, I believe it's a, it was a fireplace. Now, that doesn't make any sense for a casemate, because it's where you store munitions. You wouldn't want a fireplace in there. But I thought maybe they put the fireplace in for the prisoners. Um, I, do, I don't know. It, maybe it's not even a fireplace. But there's some kind of a mantle or something, a shelf on the wall. And... We're just sitting there in the dark, and uh, I look over to this mantle, and there is a dim light on the wall on the mantle where the mantle is. This very dim light, blue, uh, probably the size of. I don't know, a lunchbox, nope, hold on, hold on for a second, alright, sorry guys, sorry, I'm back, I was just talking to the guy, um, he's gonna be there at 6.30, so, I'm arriving at 6.20, so I just wanted to talk to touch base with him real quick. Um, anyway, back to the story I was telling. Uh, we're in casemate number five. There is a mantle of some sort. I don't know if it's a fireplace or maybe it's a fireplace put in later. I don't know. But it definitely wasn't there during the Revolutionary War. Um, this light very dim, bluish colored light is on the mantle. I said to Val and Andrew, I said, do you guys see this light? And they're like, yeah, what is it? And I said, I don't know. Now, there are little portals and windows in this casemate, but they're so tiny. And I got up and looked, and there's no light on the other side of them. Uh, coming through that could make this light on the wall. So, I don't know if it was Andrew or myself, we started to say, uh, we're like, if that's you, if that's a spirit, can you make the light brighter? And I'll be damned, but that light got brighter, and it was uh, bright enough that it was illuminating the wall around it. It wasn't bright, bright, but it was bright enough. I mean, we were in pitch black, so, you know, any kind of light is going to be easy for us to see. Um, this light uh, stayed there. Uh, we said, we asked if it could dim the light. And sure enough, the light dimmed. Um and then it kind of came up a little bit, got bright again, and then it slowly faded away. Um, we got up to put our hands where the light had been, and it was ice cold. I mean, like ice, like you were touching ice. Ice cold, freezing um, cement or, or plat whatever they made this room out of. Um, 
that was, uh, that was, <laughs> I mean, I still, I would love to go back to Fort Mifflin. That night in particular was really like, like you couldn't walk away from that and be like, now we thought maybe scientifically speaking, this is why I have doubts, uh, about it. The fort is surrounded by a swamp. It's mostly swamplands that are around it. It has a moat around it that's a swamp. Um, could it have been swamp gas? Uh, which is uh, almost like a ghost light. I have never seen swamp gas. I, had, I have seen ghost lights... Uh, both in Marf, Marfo or whatever it is down in Texas, there's a, a place you can pull over and look out into this field and you can see lights out there, the Marfo lights or something. And I also saw the Brown Mountain lights in North Carolina where we went out a few nights in a row and finally could see these strange lights that are down in the woods. You go to this uh, overlook and look down into the little valley there, and we could see lights floating in the trees, and some would come up into the sky and disappear. It was very weird. Um, so I was thinking, could it have been uh, a gas, some kind of a release of methane? Okay, sorry we conked out. We're in Virginia. Um, I don't. I don't know if if uh, the lights could have been uh, some kind of a gas that came out of the swamp. I don't know. Um, but since I've seen ghost lights before, what they call ghost lights, which are actually just a natural phenomenon, um, uh, I, I can't put it past that we saw possible, some kind of a, 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 re, a natural thing that happened between the, the moat or the swamp and then the environment inside the casemate. We don't know. Um, so that makes me doubt it a little bit, but that's what happened. We really did see these lights dancing across the ceiling of this place. It was very, very strange. Um, Another ghost story that I have, I've told all these stories before, so if you've heard them, um, I apologize, but, um, another ghost story that I have, and this one I actually believe is a ghost story, um, we have some really haunted places in Maryland, but one of the, probably the most haunted place in Maryland is the Point Lookout Lighthouse. Uh, the Point Lookout Lighthouse is at the very southernmost point of the state. It's in St. Mary's County in a park called Point Lookout State Park, which is popular with campers and um, fishermen. And uh, was once a was a Civil War prisoner camp for Confederates. When it was a prisoner's camp in the 1860s, uh, there was uh, just horrible deaths there um, from disease. Again, uh, a lot of uh, insect-borne diseases that couldn't be treated back then. If you're bitten 24 hours a day by mosquitoes, you're going to get something. You're going to get some kind of disease or illness from being stung by mosquitoes all day. Uh, I know for a fact that that's the case because when I went down there last time and we went to the to the haunted campsite or allegedly haunted campsite, my legs were covered with bites. I was only outside for 
six, seven minutes, and I, I was like, my, felt my legs tickling, and I shined a light down, and my fucking legs were covered with mosquitoes. Covered. I'm talking like, I would say at least 200 mosquitoes on each leg. And I jumped up and down and ran back to the camper. I could not believe how many mosquitoes there were. Um, the other time I went down was different. I got access to go into the lighthouse. Now, when I was a kid, my dad and my mother we used to go down there and go camping. And I don't remember anything specifically kind of haunt, haunted-wise as a kid, although I do remember going to the point and going to the gate and looking at that lighthouse and wishing that I could go inside, but unfortunately, because I read, the, one of the books I had had a whole story about the lighthouse in it, um, and I also bought a ghost book down in St. Mary's County, not at the park, because the park doesn't like to talk about their ghosts. Um, there are mass graves there, um, there have been reports of haunt ghosts sightings all over the park. The whole place is haunted. I mean, it's, it doesn't matter where you go, there's going to be ghosts. Um, anyway, I, I had access to the lighthouse. I went down with this guy named Chris, who was a Maryland State trooper. Um, as we went into the park, I was about a mile and a half in, and I got pulled over for speeding. I was going six miles an hour over the very strict 15 mile per hour speed limit. Uh, and Chris threw a fit and wanted to pull his badge out and tell the guys, the park rangers, what assholes they were. But I, I begged him, please don't do that. I, I said, we'll just... And we didn't, and they let me go. They didn't give me a ticket or anything. They said, slow down. So I was like, oh. He's like, I guess they're bored if I only had a mile and a half stretch of road to patrol. And I'm like, dude, just chill. I didn't know this guy that well. He was another ghost dude. And I ended up saying, you know, you want to go down. There either a spot open, we can go. So we went down. But anyway, um... When we got there, there was another group, and it wasn't people who were like ghost hunters, it was just this group of people who were just doing it for kicks. Um, they were there, and they were laughing and making all this noise, and it, it just, so we went outside and we're doing stuff outside. Um, but around midnight, the the four people, the two couples, they decided to leave. At which point I was like, oh my god. So they left, and the woman, the woman who was um, the host, uh, she said, I'm going to go sit in my car because I'm cold. The house does not have heat. Uh, so I said, okay, and she went and, uh, got in her car, and so Chris and I had the whole house to ourselves. Um, the house is a duplex, for some reason, there's, there's two sides to it. Uh, we were on the side that would have been facing north, uh, or it would have been facing the, the fishing, the, the end of the point where everyone fishes. Now, I want to make it clear that night it was freezing. There was no one fishing. There was not one fisherman out there. There was not much of a breeze. It was not a windy night. Uh, there, I mean, there was a light breeze from the bay, but it wasn't, it wasn't like, you know, really crazy. Um, let me read the super chat and we'll get back to the story. Daphne, Hey Dan, sorry I am late. Uh, sounds like you are telling awesome stories. Love you, my dear. Love you too, Dev. Thanks for stopping by. Daphne, everyone. 
one of Scooby-Doo fame is here to hear my ghost story. So anyway, uh, we were in the, the top of the house, second floor. There's a hallway there. Uh, there's a room in the front and a room in the back. And in the middle of the hallway is uh, steps that go down the stairs. Um, so we're in this. We're in the room uh, in the front, and we're standing in the doorway. And I keep seeing this thing. It, it almost looks like a shadow, and it keeps poking around the stairwell. Like it's in the stairwell, but it keeps poking around, like sitting on the stairwell. And it keeps, or or even leaning down on the stairwell and it keeps peeking around the corner at us and I would see it and then it would go back and I'd see and I like told Chris I said do you see what I'm seeing here and he said yeah what is that and I said I I don't know Uh, I have no idea Um, suddenly we hear a woman humming clear as day, we hear this woman humming. Uh, It is right in front of us. It's coming from just right in front of us in the hallway. Clear as day. We both got it on our recorders. Uh, We had two recorders running and we had a camera running and all three picked up this woman humming. Um... I, I can't even remember what it what, what this voice this humming sounded like uh, it was definitely doing a tune of some kind um, it just sounded very kind of morose uh, strange um, God, so. Sorry, folks. I'm in bumfuck. Um, so anyway, uh, um, the voice, the humming stops. It only lasted for 30 seconds, if even that, maybe 20 seconds. And I said, I said, did you hear that? And Chris goes, oh yeah. And, uh, I haven't the faintest idea. It, it def it wasn't the wind. It wasn't like uh, I don't I don't know what it was. I, I really don't. Um, it sounded like a female, like a female humming. Uh, we caught it on audio. Uh, I played it. I don't have the audio anymore. I don't know where. It I did not archive or take care of those things like I should have. I would kill to have that shit today because I could play it for you. Um, but, um, just one of those things, man. I mean, I, I don't know uh, where it came from or what if it was from another dimension or something, I don't know, but it was a very morose sounding woman humming. Um, so that, that's that story. Fascinating, wasn't it? Uh, <laughs> um, let me think of another story that I have experienced. I went to Point Lookout again. Um, as I said, I went there two or three times and nothing happened. Uh, that was the only time something actually happened. Um, but the other two times I was there, it was quiet. Nothing Nothing happened. Um, story. 
story I haven't told. Um, I went up to, uh, there's an old mansion that's outside of Towson, Maryland. It's called Hampton, the Hampton House. And um, I went with my friends. This was a long time ago. I think we were teenagers. We decided to go after dark, even though it's a national park, uh, because the house was supposedly haunted. And we decided to go after dark and go sit in the garden and see if anything would happen if we were there. So we went up and it's a beautiful house. You can look it up. Um, of course, I wouldn't do this today, but I was a teenager, so I was like, fuck it. Um, we went to Hampton House, went around back to the gardens. And uh, we were sitting on a bench right behind the house. Um, and uh, we're like just listening, whatever. And I went up near the house. I went onto the porch, the back porch of the house, which is a large uh, structure. It's like it's like tiles. It's um, you know, would have been used to go and sit outside back in the day. Um, I don't remember the history of the house. Probably 1800s, somewhere around there. Um, we were all sitting there, and I went to the, to the back of the porch of the house, and I was just looking in one of the windows and couldn't see anything looked in the other window, couldn't see anything, and, uh, all of a sudden, uh, on the window, like that, uh, tapping on the window that I just looked through, and I was like, oh my god, and I turned around, and it was just dark, um, uh, I don't, know if there was anybody in the house, if they were, it was dark in there, and I can't imagine that they wouldn't come out and yell at us and tell us to get off the property, um, but it was somebody, they went like that, and, um, it was insane, <laughs> I just never, um, it was just one of those things, and witnesses are important, I think. Witnesses are very important, but, uh, that was pretty cool. Um, I have stories from the Belvedere, I, where I live. I don't really talk about it anymore, and I don't want to be involved with it anymore because I have to live there. Um, but during the darkest times of my grief and depression... Um, the, uh, whatever is there was definitely fucking with me, I think. Um, maybe it wasn't, maybe I just wanted it to be something else other than being in this grief-stricken depression. Maybe I wanted it to be something else than that, but, um... I don't, I don't, I don't know. All I know is, is that, uh, I've had experiences in my apartment, in the hallway of the building, when I'm doing laundry, uh, when I had an office in the building on, on 11. If you guys have seen, um, uh, Unsolved Mysteries, um, there's an episode of Unsolved Mysteries, the new show, not the old one, the new one that's on Netflix. But it was season one, and it was a story about Ray Rivera, uh, the man who went missing in Baltimore, and then they found him in a storage room at the Belvedere, and he had jumped off of the roof and somehow landed 45 feet away from the building, and he landed on the roof and fell through the roof into a room a storage room that was abandoned, and, uh, it took them six or seven days to find him, 
Uh, they found his car parked in the lot next to the building, and then they, they found him there. But um, there are tons of ghost stories in the Belvedere. Or just, not even ghost stories, but just, like, stories of complete tragedy. Uh, suicides and murders and two little girls getting their legs chopped off in the elevator because uh, the elevator opened at the lobby and then as they went to step out it dropped all of a sudden they both fell into the uh, shaft their legs fell into the shaft and then within a second the elevator then jumped back up again and crushed their legs uh, where they had to be amputated I, I can't find any story or any information if, as if they survived I don't know if they lived uh, that happened in 1926, I believe. 1926, somewhere around there. Or maybe it was 28. I think it was 28. 1928. Um, one of the, the... The building was abandoned in the 70s, and then uh, there was a caretaker there, and... He had these two schmucks working for him uh, that he neglected to pay. Uh, so the two schmucks came to the building to collect their money, and he didn't have it, and they shot him dead in the lobby. Uh, then they went up to 11 and found a trunk, and they put him in the trunk and drove him up 83 and dropped his body over the edge of the highway. Uh, there's been a lot of jumpers at the Belvedere. Um, the windows are not like old hotel windows where you can't open them. They're, they're openable windows. So people have opened the windows up and jumped to their death um, at the Belvedere. Uh, my apartment had a suicide in my apartment. Uh, and also the murder of a bride. Um, an attempted suicide. Maybe I moved there to experience living there. When I was 19, I worked there. Uh, I was a uh, uh, busboy downstairs at the Owl Bar and the other restaurant. I can't remember what it was called. It's not there anymore. They now only use that stuff for weddings and events. But um, the Owl Bar is still open. Uh, but I, I, um, when I worked there, I had an experience, um, so they hired me basically because, oh, let me read this, hold on, uh, uh, Rob again, um, I have a friend who, uh, lived at the Belvedere, I should get you two to meet. Oh, I mean, that would be interesting. I, I mean, I have people, you know, I know a lot of people in the building now. Uh, some people don't have any stories. Other people have a story. Other people have, you know, lots of stories. Um, when I worked there, it was uh, 1996. I would have been 19. I was 19 years old. And, um... Is that abandoned? No, that's where that old hotel used to be. They tore it down. And then that video with Will and I where we went to an old hotel and it was on this road on the other side here, this, this like, side road. And we found that hotel or something with dogs in it. Remember that? It's fucking crazy. Dude. Um, 
anyway, when I started working at the Belvedere, I was 19 and uh, wasn't very happy about having to work at the Belvedere, but I needed money, so I went to work because, um, you know, being a degenerate club kid would cost money. Uh, I never, I was like, hmm, pay the rent or go to a fabulous club in New York. Let's go to New York. <laughs> you know, that was like my MO. Um, so I uh, went to work at the Belvedere, busboy. The ladies who I worked with refused to go upstairs. Now, these are ladies who had worked there prior to the building becoming abandoned, and they, they came back once it reopened as the Sheraton, and the restaurants reopened, the Sheraton hired them back. Uh, but they refused to go upstairs. Now, why? They, w they wouldn't go to the 13th floor. Why is that? Because they believed that there were ghosts up there and that they were not, they did not want to go up there. Um, both of them had, a, had an experience up there or experiences and refused to step foot up there ever again. Um, the one lady told me her story is that she went up, uh, they, they have servant quarters up on the 14th floor, it's like above the 13th floor bar, and there are these little rooms, and they were for servants, uh, who worked at the hotel, who could live there, and then, you know, they were always on call, uh, to come work. Well, anyway, the Sheraton didn't use those, people hadn't, nobody had lived in them for probably 50 years, uh, so the, uh, restaurant, I don't even know if I'm on now, because this thing just blinked off, this is what I asked you to do. Alright, I'm back. Sorry about that. Again, I'm in Virginia. We're getting further south. Um, she told me the restaurant started storing their their linens up in this in the old uh, servant quarter rooms, and the woman who worked there, um, she told me that one night they ran out of linen, so she had to go upstairs to grab the linens, and you have to take the elevator to the 13th floor, and then go into the stairwell and go up the stairs to get up to the 14th floor. There's no way up there except for the steps. And also up there is the hat, the, the, the hatch to go out to the roof, um, where um, Ray Rivera would have when he jumped. Uh, so, um, she told me that she went up to grab linens, and when she came out of the servant quarter room of the linen, she was going to the top of the stairs, and she looked up, and there was a man uh, dressed in a tuxedo standing by the door that goes out to the roof. Uh, she said that he was uh, finely dressed but looked uh, very uh, sad and that she screamed and threw the, t the linens and she said that she almost fell down the stairs. She got to the elevator and she said, I'm never going up there again. You can fire me. I'm not going back to the roof. So that's the story. But I, uh, so my job when I worked there was to take glasses uh, that had been washed. Uh, there was whole racks and racks of glasses. And I would take them up to the bar on the 13th floor. Um, there used to be a bar up there. It's not there anymore. Um, now it's just an event space. But back then there was a bar and they would serve a lot of people. And then uh, at the end of the night, I would go up and restock all the glasses. So this one night I went up there and uh, um, I had like 
probably six or seven racks. It was like the racks, it was as tall as I was, maybe a little bit taller. So I pushed it into the elevator. Oh god, there's King's Dominion. I'm this far down. Jesus. It's King's Dominion. The amusement park. Um, push the racks over to the bar. There's nobody up there. It's closed. Probably going on 3 a.m. Because uh, I would leave right after I would stock the glasses upstairs. I would leave. Um, so I started putting the glasses on the bar. And uh, I put all the glasses on the bar. Probably a couple hundred glasses. Maybe not that much. Maybe a hundred glasses. Um, and I'm putting them away. I go behind the bar and I start stocking, you know, where they have all the glasses and stuff. And, uh, getting them down to, you know, I keep putting them away, putting them away. And, uh, I'm just checking to see if, um, I'm just checking to see if, uh, this, um, <gasps> what the fuck is that? Please don't tell me that's inside the truck. Oh, it's outside. It's some kind of beetle. <laughs> what the hell that bug is? Or maybe it's one of those um those bugs that everyone's going on about in Maryland that are uh... oh, I gotta text Dan and tell him I'm gonna be late. Really, I don't want to go at all. I just want to go home and admire my chairs. You know how that is? When you get something and then you set it down and you're like, oh my god. You're like, I can't believe it. I have wanted... I'm not even joking. Ten years I've wanted these chairs. Just, I would take just one of them. But I'm getting two today. I don't know how the fuck... I have not been on Marketplace... In a while, because, uh, well, I haven't had a lot of money. I wasn't working. And, um, but now that I'm back at work, money's coming in again. So even though I have to pay things off, I'm still, <laughs> I just can't let this go. I'm sorry. It was a sign it was like, you know what? This is my my quit smoking gift to myself. That's what this is. But sometimes if you really want something and a deal like this comes up, like I was up all morning panicking. I'm like, please call me, please, please text me. And he texted back, but he texted back at like 8.30 in the morning. And I didn't even notice, because I don't know how to use fucking Facebook. I don't understand it. I hate Facebook. Like, there's no point in me using it. I, My friends and shit are all on Amazon, uh, not Amazon, fucking Instagram.
Um, so how many packs of cigs are these chairs? <laughs> oh my god. Um, let me see. Oh wait, I want... No, I don't want fucking notes. Where's the calculator? What is that? Oh, maybe I need to put it, like... Well, I didn't realize you had to download it. All I've eaten for the last three days is fucking shit. Like, literally nothing but fucking crap. I need to get back, get back to where I once belong. Is that right? Um, it would be about... Hold on now. This... I don't know. It, it's a lot of cigarettes. <laughs> but I don't want to tell anyone how much they cost. They're expensive, but... Um, they're not as expensive as if I were buying them in New York. Let's just leave it at that. Well, you guys are just waiting for me to die, aren't you? Thanks, Bulk Hogan. Is it Bulk Hogan or Hulk Hogan? This is Bulk Hogan. Thank you. I better not get my throat slashed. These chairs better be here. He has the chairs. I, I guarantee you they're in the trailer. He probably took them out of the trailer. Or put them in the trailer to... <gasps> I hear a I hear vehicle.
This is him. Okay.
So you can see a little bit better. Yeah, that would be great. Um, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Yeah, there's people are watching you right now. There's six hundred people watching. That's good. Yeah. Well, if you were gonna like if you were gonna uh, murder me or something, uh -huh. they'd all know. So <laughs> we got six hundred people watching me back right now. Yeah. Greg, thank you. I appreciate it, man. It's very nice so to meet much. you, man. It's nice very nice to meet you. you. And uh, um, I'll be in touch about that wall hanging because I, I really like that. Uh -huh. um, I just don't want to spend any more money today. Hey, I, I can understand. I don't have it for sale and I haven't even put it up yet. So you don't have to worry about anybody buying it yet unless somebody randomly comes through and wants yeah, it. Are cool, man. I'm really glad you got it. Hey, man, I really appreciate that. No problem. Have Thanks. Have a crowd back, man. Thanks for coming out all this way. No problem. It was worth it. Thank you. All right, man. have the chairs um, but they're in the truck ready to go home so I am very happy mm. they're fucking beautiful the chairs I thought they were going to be like a lot heavier, but they're not that heavy. But they're sturdy, but I'm not sitting in them because... Ooh, damn. Don't do that, motherfucker. Shit. Why is this one, like, going back and forth like that? Hold on.
It's all right. It's okay. They're not going anywhere. Well, let me text my mom before she has a heart attack. Hey mom, I just got raped. No. Anyway, this dude showed me pictures of his apartment when he lived in um, Richmond. And uh, God, his apartment was beautiful. He had all this mid-century furniture. And uh, he has this piece in there that is from the 1990s. It's like a postmodern wall hanging with like glass. And uh, like there's a ball hanging off of it with a with like a, um, uh, that's like on a, um, uh, on a piece of metal. It's like on a metal cord. Uh, I should have taken a picture of it. Well, I didn't have a camera on my, but, um, it's beautiful. I really would love to have it. Um, but again, I just, man, like, I can't spend any more money today. He wanted a thousand for it, which is, I think, a very fair price. I wouldn't even haggle that price because it's, it's worth double that, but they're hard to sell, like these chairs. I mean, you're not, these chairs that I just bought, you're not going to sell them in Virginia. Nobody's buying these chairs down here. They're a tough sell, no matter, uh, if you're not in, uh, New York or Los Angeles. Tough sell. But they're dirty. They're covered with dust and cobwebs. So I gotta clean them up when I get home. Three fucking hours of driving. I cannot believe it. I feel like I'm on vacation to hell. Dude, is this guy gonna stop? He's on a bike. I don't wanna hit him. This is uh, nice having the truck in this kind of a situation. Watch the chair blow out of the back of the truck. I'm going to be worried for three fucking hours going home. Like a sudden gust of wind. Because the back of these things are flat.
Everybody give a thumbs up, please. We only have, what, 450 thumbs up. Thumbs up, please. Tomorrow is, or Monday, is supposed to be 100 degrees. Monday and Tuesday. Right now, it's like fall weather. It's, well, right now it's 80. It feels great. It's beautiful. There's no humidity. The sun is out. It's fucking beautiful. Monday, Tuesday, it's going to be an inferno. Someone you may know for straps. Thank you, someone you may know. Yeah. Probably would have been a wise choice. But. I could go to the. service station. They probably would have some. is a flat board so they were like doing this and I'm like it probably wouldn't I'm gonna stop and get some twine they need I need twine they're just fucking making me nervous Someone you may know, I will use your $20 to buy twine or straps 
which I should have underneath the seat in the back, but I don't, because I don't do that. I, I never haul anything on this truck. watching this live stream I'd be like fuck Dan I'm not watching this shit I mean, just get off of here and then you're all watching it's crazy uh oh damn um the September sun that I, I can't fucking see anything shit am I going the right way no. So I'm on the other side of the thing and I'm taking the wrong exit, wrong road. When I get home, ugh, it's already fucking 7 30. Damn. I gotta tell Dan. So wait a minute, 7.30. I won't be home until 10.30. Dan, um, I went down to Virginia to pick up the chairs, and I am three hours away from home. It's already 
so I'm going to stop and get some food. Um, but if you want to meet around 11, I know that's kind of late, but we could go out for a minute then. But um, Or if you're already out, I can meet you. But I got to get home uh, with the chairs first. There was a lot of traffic on the way down, so... Alright, just text me back and let me know you got this. Alright, so we have that taken care of. Probably a good thing, honestly. I need to lose some fucking weight. But I need fucking food. I'm like zoning out. This, you know, I knew this was going to be a long trip. I mean, especially the way back. The excitement is over now. I have the chairs, you know. I'll be even more excited when I get them cleaned up and get them in the house. But uh, I gotta park around back and take them up the freight elevator. Let's see what they got here. Pizza Hut, Mexico. I don't even know what that says. I haven't eaten in 24 hours. That's the pro that's why I'm like so like fucking hungry. Hmm. Left. There's a truck stop. eating Pizza Hut. I haven't had Pizza Hut since I was like a kid. I didn't realize, I guess they just serve the pizza like at a stand now instead of the restaurant with the fire pit in the middle. fucking good.
I love when somebody already figured out what the fucking chairs I got. Like, who knows? I, I mean, I guess people know who these chairs are, but still. I saw somebody in there mention the chairs. For 600 It was a lot more than 600 But, well, it would be great at 600 These chairs are dusty and spiderweb. Oh my god. Ugh, I hate when people listen to what I order. I'm just gonna mute. Okay, I'm back. Um, Alien Train 28. We all love you. Just the... We all love you. Just the way you are, Dan. Oh. I think that's what you meant to say. But anyway, thank you, darling. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I just, uh, you know... I'm trying to keep the trolls at bay when they sit there and go, oh, you actually think he's going to lose weight eating at Wendy's, but I'm on the fucking road, man. I'm going uh, grocery shopping tomorrow uh, at uh, Sprouts, so I'm going to get a bunch of the salads I love, the bag salads, back to eating that shit. Um, I only strayed for like a week, because, uh, because, um, I was so fucking freaked out by the, the orders that I had to deal with, um, that, uh, I really, I was panicking. <laughs> So I just, I ran out of food and then I was like, so I just started ordering Grubhub, which two Grubhub orders, I complained my ass off about and got refunds because I was, the food, I ordered from this one place in Baltimore, I always liked their food. It always came, you know, nice, the Grubhub, uh, nice. Um, this time I ordered it, it tasted like fucking stuff they pulled out of the garbage so disgusting, and, uh, boy, was I pissed off, um, 
because my bill was like a hundred bucks. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, uh, thank you very much. So I had to get, um, I had to get refunds. Fucking disgusting fucking food. I was so angry. I was so hungry. And my thing is, and it's not a good thing, is that, uh, oh, damn it, there's a subway right there with a drive through I could have just went to Subway and got a nice sub instead of this fast food shit. I'm almost tempted to go there, but I just spent $17. But I tell you where I am going is Starbucks. I love this little sad hamburger. There's no way I'm going out tonight. <clears throat> Ugh, I want a massage so bad. It would be so nice right now. Mark, thanks for getting uh, prints. Yes, I got the um, I got one of the three rare ones. That's awesome. Um, And around Christmas, there'll be a Christmas sale on 11 by 14s. I'm going to introduce 11 by 14s very soon. Because people are like, I want 11 by 14. I just don't want to have to buy four prints. So I'm like, I get your point. So I'm going to make some 11 by 14s. But Kevin says, what's the best kind of Polaroid? Polaroid frame, what do you mean? Mm. You mean like a frame, like to put the Polaroid in the frame? 
Oh, um, Kevin, what I have been getting, um, I order them like 12 at a time, but, uh, they come in a set of 12 on, um, Amazon. I think they're eight by eight frames with a four by four mat in them. And the Polaroid fits perfectly in the mat, except the bottom's cut off. I mean, the, the white part where all the chemicals are in. So it's just a frame with the sides of the picture, but it looks really nice. Um, and I'm actually going to be putting Polaroids back up on the website. I'm only going to sell them framed. I can't stand the Polaroids <laughs> because it's not, it's like, I can't like, I take so many Polaroids and then they sell like so fast and that's a good thing, but I'm spending days and days out taking photos because it's not like just like, oh, there, 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 you know, and we're done. It's days and days and days. That's why they're so expensive. Um, you know, they're, they're like, we were, I was selling them for 42 bucks. Um, so basically, um, I'm only going to sell them framed in the fort. Oh, good night, uh, Alien Train. Thank you so much. I'm going to sell them framed in the 4x4 four four, uh, with the mat, the 4x4 four four mat. 8x8. Eight eight. And I'm probably... I, I'm probably going to lower the... I'll probably do like 39 or something. 39 to get it framed. And then shipping and handling... Um, I gotta figure out how to do that. What kind of box I would need to send it off safely. There's priority mail, but... Priority mail is, uh... More expensive than first class. And people have been getting their shit just as fast using first class. And it's like a third of the cost. So... Isn't this a pretty sandwich? This is a spicy chicken. And I had them do it without the, the mayonnaise and the tomato. is pretty good. It's pretty good. Thank you, Wendy's. Yeah, Wendy's is, is, is pretty good. It's better than McDonald's. But <clears throat> this week, I had McDonald's twice. Just desperation. Trying to get those damn orders filled. Last week, I mean, so. Yeah, I'm going to be busy this week, too. I've just got a whole slew of uh, new sales today. And I don't have an assistant anymore. I just do it myself.
Shit, Dylan's making a ton of money right now. He is doing real estate photography. He, he's, uh, he's doing really well. I'm really happy for him. Sorry, you guys. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm trying to like do something. Okay, what is this? Sorry. Get out of here over here.
Oh my god, the parking lot suddenly ends. Okay, so you have to go out over here. All right. Oh. Dude, I'm so tired. Just like done for the day. Oh, there's an exit right there. Keep forgetting I have food. That motel was somewhere. The the picture I did, Lonely Motel. It, it was definitely somewhere around here. We're back on the road. After getting some disgusting... There was an Airstream. Sorry. There was an Airstream uh, place there that sells Airstream trailers. Or campers, or whatever you want to call them. I can't believe that. I didn't even know they still made those things. I thought all the ones that are out now are vintage. My friends have one that's a vintage uh, model, I guess. And um, it's one of the bigger ones. I think it's the biggest one they ever made or whatever. Um, and they take that thing out to the woods and camp in it and stuff, and it's really cool inside, it's an awesome, they, they did, um, they had the whole interior removed, and then they had a company rebuild it, but in a, like, modern retro, so, it looks beautiful, <clears throat> but everything inside is now modern, modernized, so, they have, like, central air, and all the things that those airstreams did not have back in the day, but, uh, it is a beautiful thing, I've never, they invited me to go camping with them, but I never went, I don't like camping, I don't, I don't like air, like, even, uh, campers, I just, I just don't find any comfort in a camper. I don't, I like hotels, where you go and check into a beautiful hotel and you have room service, it's beautiful. 
That's what I like. I don't, I don't like this campground shit. It's not my favorite thing. I should have got water. Hey, W. Or AP. JW. Excuse me. I smell weed. I keep smelling weed. I think like people are driving on the highway smoking weed and the, the smoke literally gets sucked into the engine and then it comes in here and the cap, well I know that's what happens, it happens to me in Baltimore too, because everybody is now smoking weed when they're driving around in Baltimore, at night especially, there'll be at a traffic light and a cloud of smoke people smoking weed but I haven't been high in here like <clears throat> oh, I got high in um, in Denver Colorado like 10 years ago it was in 2014. And, uh, I got nervous and was, like, shivering and was having a panic attack. <laughs> oh, there we go. Sorry about that, guys. It was, uh, another mishap with the, uh, the, uh, 5G, the fastest internet on a mobile device. Literally from spending the whole time talking down, it went fast, but now I don't feel like talking anymore, so I don't know how these talk, well, I mean, I've done it before, I think, I mean, I've, I've definitely live streamed this long and continue to talk through the live stream, but right now, 
I am zoning out on the road and just praying to see the lights of DC. At which point, I'll know I only have 40 minutes to go. Ugh. But what a fun adventure today. That was fun. You know, I, I have been starting the Saturday, uh, the lives, you know, I've been, I did the last one at 6 p.m. And I'm doing this one at, uh, you know, we started today at, what, 2, 2 o'clock, 2, 3 o'clock, 3 o'clock, so... I've been broadcasting for five hours. <clears throat> I'm a little tired of talking. I'm becoming, um, what's the word for it? Um, not tongue tied, I'm just done. I need coffee. I really should have stopped at Starbucks. Why didn't I stop? Why didn't I stop at Starbucks? Um, I'll stop at the next town. They should have coffee somewhere. You know, back in the day, anywhere you went, they had coffee. You could go to any fast food place, uh, a diner, anywhere you can come a coffee. Nowadays, it's like if Starbucks is closed, you're on your own. Unless McDonald's, I mean McDonald's does serve coffee. I'm not a big fan of McDonald's coffee. I'm not. I don't really like it. It's too fucking hot. I don't like how hot it is. I am an iced coffee person. Uh, year round, not just summer, um, iced coffee all the year round, and, uh, yeah, coffee, yeah, I need a coffee, I really do. but look guys, I'm gonna go, I wanna, um, actually, is this Starbucks? Oh, Duncan has coffee, too, but I don't like their coffee, either. I think it's gross. Any Starbucks? No, those are, uh, hotels. Okay, guys, I'm gonna go. Love you guys. 7-Eleven. Good idea. No Starbucks here. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you for coming along. It was a lot of fun. I really appreciate it. Talk soon. Ta-ta.